Hey, Beacon, welcome home to your Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast, where you are challenged to be, do, and have God's best as you thrive on your journey from setback to success. I'm your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'll be guiding you on the journey by sharing tips, tools, and the tea on how I was able to bounce back from escaping death, healing from heartbreak, and finding hope in homelessness. And then I wrote an award-winning book all about it. And shout out to God. Ever since I was courageous enough to share my story, my life and the lives of women around the world have been forever changed. And as a member of the Bounce Back Blueprint community, I'm called to teach you to do the same. So grab your journal and let's build this blueprint. Hey Beacon, hey, before we get into building the blueprint this week, I wanted to make sure you know this episode is being brought to you by the Bounce Back Blueprint private Facebook community. It is the place to be if you are ready to grow and thrive on this journey of setback to success. We got Power Morning Monday, we got Free Game Friday, and a bunch of other greatness in between. Plus, you can make covenant connections and get even more of the tips, tools, and tea to help you along your bounce back journey. So head on over with the link in the show notes and join us in the community. Now let's get into building the blueprint. So this week we are continuing our journey around the topic of the power of community and all things relationships. This week I am super excited to chat with you about your front row. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this poem that has been floating around for some time and it's entitled, Everyone Can't Be in Your Front Row. So I want to share this poem with you. I'm not sure who to give it credit um, to because it's posted anonymously all of the time when I see it, but I want to use it as a reference point and then we are going to dig into building your front row. So here's the poem. Life is a theater, so invite your audience carefully. Not everyone is holy enough and healthy enough to have a front row seat in our lives. There are some people in your life that need to be loved from a distance. A word already, right? It's amazing what you can accomplish when you let go or at least minimize your time with draining, negative, incompatible, not going anywhere relationships, friendships, fellowships, and family. Everyone can't be in your front row. Observe the relationships around you. Pay attention to which ones lift and which ones lean, which ones encourage and which ones discourage, which ones are on a path of growth uphill and which ones are just going downhill. When you leave certain people, do you feel better or feel worse? Which ones always have drama or don't really understand, know, and appreciate you and the gift that lies within you? Everyone can't be in your front row. The more you seek God and the things of God, the more you seek quality. The more you seek not just the hand of God, but the face of God. The more you seek things honorable, the more you seek growth, peace of mind, love, and truth around you. The easier it will be to become the easier it will become for you to decide who gets to sit in the front row and who should be moved to the balcony of your life. Everyone can't be in your front row. You cannot change the people around you, but you can change the people you are around. Ask God for wisdom and discernment and choose wisely the people who sit in the front row of your life. Remember that front row seats are for special and deserving people and those who sit in your front row should be chosen carefully. Everyone can't be in your front row. So what do you think about that? If you are looking in your front row right now, do you see people that you want to be there? Do you see people who when the lights come on, you know will be giving you a standing ovation regardless of what anyone else says or thinks? Do you have people in your front row that were mentioned in that beginning of the poem that were um, draining, negative, incompatible, not going anywhere? They may be friends. They may be family. They may be people you fellowship with. Hopefully they're not people you're fellowshipping with, 
but I really want to challenge you to get honest with yourself about who's in your front row. Maybe there are some people in your front row who need to be moved to the balcony. I'm going to say that again for the people in the balcony. Maybe there are some people in your front row who need to be moved to the balcony. And perhaps there are some people you've placed in the balcony that in this season of your life need to be seated in your front row. And so I want to share today some of the people that I have in my front row and how you might use my front row seaters as an example to evaluate and potentially screen for or recruit or be on the lookout for some of these um, people to fill your front row. And I'm not giving them in any particular order, but you might want to grab your journal so that you can grab hold of these people. So first, we're going to start with listening Linda. Remember the little boy with the uh, video and he was like, listen, 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 Linda. Well, this Linda does listen, does listen. Listening Linda is the friend that you know that you can call on that if you're crying, if you're hurt, if you're struggling, you can reach out to her. You can open up in confidence. You don't have to worry about listening Linda sub subliminally posting your business on Facebook for people to comment or question or judge you. You know that what goes on or what's spoken between the two of you is going to stay between the two of you. Like she is your judgment free zone. Now, listening Linda is going to let you vent, right? She's going to let you empty out and she's going to pour into you and she's going to encourage you. What she's not going to do is accept invitations to constant pity parties that you keep inviting her to. She's not going to allow you to dwell on the past. She's not going to let you be a garbage picker and keep plucking old stuff. Okay, so let me reiterate that. Listening Linda is your confidant, but she also has some accountability, right? She has a little bit of a backbone. She is not going to be a garbage picker and keep, excuse me, she is not a lot going to allow you to be a garbage picker and keep plucking old stuff out of the trash. She's going to absolutely encourage and empathize with you, but she's also going to be the one to let you know that complaining isn't going to change anything. So you have to get you a listening Linda in the front row. She's your confidant and your encourager. So I want you to consider, do you have a listening Linda? Is she in the front row or is she in the balcony? Are you someone else's listening, Linda? Does someone else have you in the balcony where they're only calling you when they have to dump or vent, but they don't want to receive anything from you? They don't want to be held accountable and you don't hear from them other times. Everybody can't be in your front row and you can't be in everybody else's front row. So after lin listening, Linda, we have Sister Sergeant. Sister Sergeant is, you know, your coach. She's the person who's on you to make sure you're moving forward. She's going to hold you accountable. She's going to question whether what you're saying or what you're doing is the reason why you're not getting to where you know God is taking you. And she's going to call you out if you're in your own way. You know, she's the person who is going to call you out when you want to feel sorry for yourself and when you think all you need to do is call listening Linda, right? She is the one who's going to be like, but what did you do? And really what you need is some constructive criticism. That is your sister sergeant. She also is going to be the one who can maybe see a perspective that you may not have considered, right? She's going to hold you accountable and make sure you exhaust all options before you try to come up with another plan or deviate from, you know, like I said, what she knows and what you know God has called you to be doing. And sister sergeant is one who you want to choose very carefully because she needs to have a backbone, right? She needs to be sensitive, but she also needs to be tough. She needs to be thorough. She needs to be able to put her foot down and say, listen, no, that is not how it's going down. And Sister Sergeant also needs to be the one who will stand 
up to you no matter what, right? She is going to have to have some, she's going to have to have some guts, you know? She's going to have to be able to tell you tactfully when you are wrong and let you know, right? So if you're always Sister Sergeant, but you don't feel like anyone else can stand up to you or hold you accountable, or you're not being supported in a way that iron sharpens iron, that certainly can be something that you begin to petition God about, you know, that you need an accountability partner. You want someone who is rooted in the word, who is strong-willed, but also compassionate to be your sister sergeant. And if you're always sister sergeant and you're not in the front row where you know you need to be, again, if you're not in relationships where iron is sharpening iron, then you need to be able to say for yourself as well that maybe it's time for you to make some new friends, right? Like we talked about last week. And if you missed it, I encourage you to go back and check it out. So after Sister Sergeant, we have the dream pusher. So we all have big dreams, right? On this bounce back journey, we have these dreams and God has given us visions of how our stories are going to shift and change lives and build legacies and, you know, raise people up, inspire, encourage, entertain, educate, make people laugh. And we share these dreams and you know how it is. We might be at ladies night and we're all creating vision boards or we're talking about how it's a new month and we have these goals that we want to achieve. But what's different, what separates the dream pusher from your other friends is that she or he can actually see beyond the vision board, right? She can see your potential. She can see your purpose. She can see your destiny fulfilled. She can see your gifting according to the vision that you say or that you may have depicted on your board. And she may even be able to tell you what your first step is. So she's the visionary. Beyond just saying this is a great idea, the dream pusher is going to say, reach out to someone. So don't be afraid to take this step, you know? And even when you fail, she's going to be there and say, dream again, right? Um, push for the dream in a different way. She's going to be the one to motivate you and she's also going to be the one there to celebrate with you. She's going to challenge you on your fears and let you know that fear shouldn't stop any shows, right? Your dream pusher is your advocate for the truth in the word that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So that's the dream pusher for you. Take a minute to consider, do you have a dream pusher or do you have a front row full of only dream pushers, right? Full of visionaries, no one to hold you accountable to getting the work done or no listening ear for when you are being challenged or frustrated, right? Think about who's in your front row that might need to give up their seat so that you can place a dream pusher in it. So... That is your dream pusher. And then, baby, we got the contact queen. Yes, the contact queen. You know her? Have you seen her? She is the social butterfly, the one who knows about all of the popping happy hours that are coming up, the one who can always send you that job that is open as soon as it hits the job board or she can put you in contact with somebody and who's in HR at the company you want to work with. She might have a discount code for you, you know, the vending spot that you're trying to get into. She's a connector. She's the one who can get you in contact. She knows someone who knows someone who knows someone, right? She is invaluable because of the people she knows and the possibility that happens as a result of the people she knows. And this is both personally and professionally. She can be the one who knows someone from the person who runs the venue to the person who will be the best gynecologist, if you will. So you definitely want to have a contact queen in your circle, especially in seasons where God is stretching you and he has you doing more and you can't be on the scene all of the time, right? You know, he's calling you to take a step back. You need that person who can be on the scene and can let you know who's who so that when you are prepared to make a move, when God is revealing those next steps for you, she already has 
you a step ahead because she knows who and, you know, she knows who you need to contact and where they are or where you need to go, right? And don't confuse the contact queen with the gossip guru, okay? It's two different sisters, right? The gossip guru belongs in the balcony if you even let her in the venue. However, the contact queen belongs in your front row. Remember, we are growing forward. There is no room in your front row for messy. There is no room in your front row for nicety, right? We are looking for relationships and building relationships that speak to the truth and the word that iron sharpens iron. So we do not want the gossip guru in the front row. Now we can pause here and you can take a moment to get honest about whether or not you have one or a few gossip gurus in your front row. And even more, are you the gossip guru that needs to be moved to someone's balcony? Do you need to check yourself? Are you the contact queen or do you just know people's business? Because there is a difference, right? So, all right, that is the contact queen. And now we are going to talk about our big sister. She is your big sister from another mister. Shout out to God. And she is, you know, the woman who some of us are fortunate enough that we, um, as we walk through this journey, we encounter, right? We encounter women who are where we want to be or women who are more mature and more experienced. And these women are often referred to as our mentors or role models, right? Your big sister may be a pioneer in your field. She may be a mighty woman of God, a force to be reckoned with, right? She's a maybe a wife, a mom, someone who has already owned or started a business. You know, she is your big sister. She is your you know, the one who has the guidance and the respect you can trust to propel you forward. And that doesn't mean that you're tagging along with her everywhere that she goes, right? That's what I used to do with my big sister. What it does mean, though, is that she has already been a trailblazer and she's in a position to nurture your journey as you become a trailblazer as well. She may be the sponsor that can get you in the room, right? She may be the mentor. She also might be an ally to support you once you're in the room. She is very similar to what Jethro uh, was for Moses in Exodus 18, which we also talked about last week on why you need new friends. Tune in if you haven't, okay? So I want to be sure to reiterate here that some of these roles may be overlapping, right? You may have a big sister who also is your listening Linda. You may have a sister sergeant who is also your dream pusher. (laughs) That's a heck of a person if you have one of them. Shout out to her because that is a strong, strong woman. Um, But what's impossible or what's most important is that you are clear about who's in your front row, right? Your front row may have seven seats. Your front row might have three seats, but you just want to be sure that all of these roles are filled, right? And last but not absolutely not least, you need to have the prayer warrior. And Your front row is not complete without your prayer warrior. You need a friend who is going to pray you off the ledge when you think, you know, you're going crazy or about doing something crazy, right? She's going to pray for you when you want to quit. And you also need a friend who is going to pumping you up with powerful prayers when you feel like fear is consuming you, right? She is that friend who is praying for you behind the scenes when you don't even know she is powerful and she's connected and her relationship with God is so intimate. She knows the prayers you need to be prayed on your behalf sometimes before you do. And she can meet you right where you are, wherever you are. She is the friend from Ecclesiastes 4 9 that is going to be able to lift you up when you feel like you've fallen down or gotten off track, right? Like I said at the beginning of this episode, 
these weren't given to you in any particular order. So for some of us, we might need to be prioritizing getting our prayer warrior into the front row, right? Maybe you have her in the balcony because she's too churchy or you don't want her throwing Jesus around in front of the gossip guru or whoever else you have misplaced or inappropriately seated in your front row. Now is the time to really get this together because your friends, your front row, your community is so important to whether or not you are going to thrive or simply survive on your bounce back journey. In fact, the people in your front row have a lot of impact on whether you even bounce back, right? Whether you even manifest what God has placed deep down inside of you. You know what I mean? So you want to be mindful of whether or not you have your listening Linda. Do you have your prayer warrior? Do you have sister sergeant and their dream pusher and your big sister? Who's in your front row? Everybody should not be there. I would love to hear from you about who is in your front row and whether or not some of the seats that I mentioned here in my front row are part of yours as well. I would also like to know which one of those seats do you most often fill? I can say undoubtedly as a coach, I am often the sister sergeant. I am grateful to know that as I have grown over the years, I have also begun to fill the role of prayer warrior. And though I am the baby in my natural family, I have become through my work and the mentorship that I do with women, the big sister. So we take on different roles dependent upon the friend who we need to be supporting, right? That does not mean that who you are changes. What it does mean is that God has gifted us so powerfully in ways that we have gifts that can serve as necessary, dependent upon the capacity. That does not mean, please do not hear me saying that you need to be everyone for everybody because that is a no-no. That will leave you drained and bitter and angry and exhausted, right? What I am saying though, is that you need to recognize that God has gifted you to be multifaceted, to be versatile, to be Um, the iron that sharpens iron in different ways for different people. So celebrate that and celebrate those who are in your life. And if you aren't sure where to even begin with filling those seats in your front row, if you aren't even sure how to begin to discuss how to move people into the balcony, then I would invite you to join us over in the Bounce Back Blueprint private community on Facebook because we are going to be digging super deep into this and really getting even more intimate about the tips, tools, and the tea that you need to employ so that you can get your front row all the way together. Because sis, when the lights come on, you want your front row to be shining and climbing with you, okay? So If you have not already, grab the link in the show notes, join us over in the community. But before you go, please do leave a review. If this episode or any other episode you've listened to has been a blessing to you, leave a review. When you do, you create an opportunity for another beacon to be blessed, to be made aware of the opportunity to be part of the Bounce Back Blueprint community so that she also can thrive on her journey from setback to success. Before I let you go, Beacon, I just want to remind you, God is not going to play you. But if you refuse to do what you need to do to get your front row together, sis, you will end up in the balcony playing yourself.